I haven't seen you in a while. There are so many people here who I love. I always in my, my feel is, and have never left my heart. This is a, this is a base measures. This is a, a kihila. that many, many years ago, I dreamt of. Together with a couple of the Khaver, we were sitting in Queens and talking about the possibility of there being such a place and what the name should be. And here we are. It's our last stop on the way to Yerushalayim. Everybody agrees? I'm asking. Good. So much has happened. Since I last saw you, so much has happened this past year. And it would take many, many days and weeks to share with you my feelings, my thoughts. But there's one very, very important point that I want to make. I'll begin with the words of the Rambam. The Rambam, in the third parak of Hilch Shuvah, the Rambam is bringing from the Gemara and Kedushan. You all know this, it's very famous. The Rambam says, person should see himself as being half innocent and half guilty. In the whole world. The whole world, a person should imagine the whole world is on the balance. All worlds are in the balance. And if the person, if you or I make a mistake, we do something we shouldn't do. Then since everything is in the balance, if you or I do something we shouldn't, then we can tip the scale of all creation. And we could chalila, we could bring destruction upon the world. But also mitzvah achas. person, the Rambam says, should see himself, should see herself in such a way that also mitzvah achas, that if I do this one mitzvah, I'm able to save the entire world. Besides saving my own life, my own existence in this world, I could change the entire world. The Garmelhem Tshuva Hatzala. And we could bring salvation. Hatzala, we could rescue the world. As it says in Pasik, the Tzadik Yisrael Arlan. The tzaddik is the foundation of the world. The entire world depends upon every thought, word, and action of the tzaddik. And all of us here right now are Hashem tzaddikim, amech kulam tzaddikim, a Jew is a tzaddik. Amech kulam tzaddikim. Tzaddik is adarlam zeresh tzaddik atzmo, the Rambam explains, a person who made an effort to change something in his life, either to do a mitzvah to improve his life. To do something extra, something different. He's able to determine the outcome of all of creation, of the entire world. 
So I want to talk about this. I heard this first when I was a little boy and it terrified me. And as I get older, it's still a little bit scary, but it gives me tremendous chizik. When the war began, I don't know what the English date is today. It must be close to the English date. Today is the October 6th. When it was Shmini Atzeres, Simchat Torah, Simchat Torah. When the, when the war began, Am Yisrael felt violated. The terrible, terrible feeling of weakness, of humiliation, of vulnerability. And because of that, there's a tremendous need for chizik. At a time of war, we need chizik. We know that Yoav was the commander-in-chief of the army of David HaMelech. And when, and when the soldiers would go to war, Yoav would scream out to them, Chazak v'nis chazak, ba'ad ameinu ba'ad arei alokeinu. Chazak v'nis chazak. Let us be strong and let us be strengthened. Ba'ad ameinu for the sake of our nation. U ba'ad arei alokeinu. And for the sake of the holy cities of Eretz Yisrael. Arei alokeinu. And the truth of the matter is that even though Yoav died many years ago and Dodo Melch is no longer with us, the goof that we could see, that call continues to go out. And whether a Jew is actually in uniform, one of our brothers or sisters in HSL, in, in, in Levon, in Lebanon, or in Gaza, in the West Bank, wherever, whether in uniform or any Jew who's not in uniform, <clears throat> anywhere in the world. Every single Jew in the world is a chaya. Every single one of us is enlisted <clears throat> in Sivas Hashem, in Hashem's army. And every single one of us since October 7th, since Simchas Torah, every single one of us is fighting Ba'ad Ameinu or Ba'ad Arei Elokeinu. Is fighting for our nation, for our people. And for every town, village in Eretz Yisrael. But a chayal or a chaylet, a soldier who's unarmed, who doesn't have a weapon, or a soldier who does have a weapon, but he doesn't know how <clears throat> to use it, or a soldier who has a weapon and even knows how to use it. But that soldier is frightened. So he or she is of no use. So if Hashem is Baruch, the master of the universe, has appointed us, his soldiers, in this world. And Hashem is Hashem Lekate Svakot, Hashem is the true commander-in-chief of this army that we belong to. It must be that each and every one of us is carrying the weapons that we need in order to fight against Oyvi Hashem, the enemies of Hashem, and the enemies of his people.
So what are the clay neshek? In Hebrew, clay neshek means the weapons. Clay zayin, clay neshek. So what are the clay neshek? How are we armed? What weapons do we carry? So in the Chabad Svarim, there's much discussion of these Kleineshek of the weapons that we have. And the Lubavitch Rebbe, Shusi Gerleinu, besides being a guy in the Tzadik, an Isha Lekim, a man of God, <clears throat> Lubavitch Rebbe was also a great expert in warfare. And you all know that there were generals and prime ministers who would consult with the Rebbe, not just for a bracha, but regarding military strategy and warfare. And that great tzaddik who I was able to see on many occasions, that great tzaddik revealed to us from the teachings of his illustrious ancestors that each one of us is carrying four weapons. Four clay nashik. So the first weapon the Bashab Tava Kadish once said Sarah Lehav Kal Yehudi that a Jew has to love another Jew so much Achimamish Mishik Lo Lakhabe Gulanashik also. You have to love another Jew so much. And when you see another Jew, of course, of your own gender, you have to be filled with such love, with such un unbelievable love, that you want to run over and hug and kiss that person. Because the word neshek, which means a weapon, is a neshika. What's a neshika? A kiss. So each one of us is given an unbelievable weapon in this war. It's called Ahavis Yisrael, the love of the Jewish people. Never we saw this past year so much Ahavis Yisrael. They're always going to be cynical and sad people who say negative things. But we saw this year. Every, every Jew was filled with those neshikas, neshikot, to give to our brothers and sisters. It didn't make a difference, religious, not religious, Ashkenazi, Svaradi, Chassidish, Mesnagdish, didn't make a difference. All of those peels were removed by our enemies. So much Ahavis is sold this past year. So much kindness, so much chesed. This weapon <clears throat> is a very powerful Kleineshek of the Neshika of one Jew for another Jew. That's the first weapon. When Jews love each other, and we give to each other, we're invincible. Our enemies fall beneath our feet. Our enemies can only hurt us <clears throat> if Khalila, we're missing this weapon in our arsenal. If we don't care for each other, if we don't love each other. 
the second Kleineshek, the second weapon, says the beginning of Shir Hashim. This is the love story between Kuchabichu and Knesset Yisrael, between Hashem and Am Yisrael. Yishakeini Meneshika Ispihu. We ask the Master of the World to kiss us once again with the kisses of his lips. Yishakeini Meneshika Ispihu. Yitoivim Doidecha Miyayin. And Rashi says, he brings from Chazal, that when Hashem gave us the Torah Har Sinai, he kissed us with his mind and his heart. He gave us himself. Anochi, anonafshi, ksovis, yehovis. Hashem gave us the kiss of his very being. When he gave us the Torah Har Sinai. And when in Shir Hashim we say, Yishakainim and Yishikos Piyu, we're asking Kaddish Baruch Hu, we're begging Hashem, kiss us again. We're waiting for the deepest secrets, as Rashi says, we're waiting for the deepest secrets of Torah to be revealed to us. Torah mi'iti teitzeh, it says in Navi, and the Medrash says, Torah chadasha mi'iti teitzeh. The new teachings of Torah that we haven't heard yet. Shabbos will be the same Shabbos, Tfilim, everything will be halacha. But the deepest, deepest secrets of Hashem's love for us, the deepest secrets of Torah we don't know yet. Yishakeinim and Yishikah Yispihu. The tzaddikim have taught us that when a Jew learns Torah, as you're saying the words of Torah, Hashem is kissing your lips. And He's giving you an understanding of more and more of His Torah. And especially when little children learn Torah. Because little children are pure. They haven't been defiled and corrupted by the world. And therefore the terror, the hevel, the, the words that come out of the mouths of Tinoi Kishabes Rabban, of little children. Those words are unbelievably powerful. It says in Tillam, in Perches, we pee oil the Yoinkim from the mouths of little children, Yisad the Oiz, comes all of our strength. Lahashbis, in order to stop and to destroy Oivim Misnakim, in order to destroy our enemies. <clears throat> the little children are, are saying, Lech Lecha Miyatzicha. When the little children are saying, Matovo Alecha Yaakov. Every single word that comes out of their mouth. Is blowing up another Hamasnik. Is killing another Hezbollah. Every single word of Torah that comes from our mouths is a powerful weapon. In the war of Am Yisrael, Bad Amenu Baad Arei Lokein. That's the second Kleneshek, the second weapon that we have, Hashem's kiss of Torah. The third Kleinesic, the third weapon, Neshek Yehudi. The Jewish weapon <clears throat> equals 485. Neshek Yehudi is the Gematria, Tehillim. David Malkin was Sheikh, was our warrior, and he was our greatest Davina. He described himself, V'ani Tvila. Not that I daven. V'ani Tvila. I am Tvila. And regarding his descendant who we're waiting for, and we're going to see very soon, Mashiach Tzikainu, it says in Pasuk, Uvruach Tzvasov Yomis Rasha. There were the ruach of his lips. Mashiach is going to kill the Rishayim. Ube ruach svasav, ube ruach svatav, yamit rasha. And Rabbi Nachman Shusilna says, 
In the second Torah, Lukuta Maran, Ki Iker Kleizainu Shul Mashiach, the main weapon, Kleizainu's weapon, Kleineshek, Iker Kleizainu Shul Mashiach, Utfila. The main weapon of Mashiach Tekainu is Davni. And the great war that Mashiach is going to lead. And all the conquests of Mashiach. Hakol Misha will come from his mouth, from the lips. The Kleineshek, the Nishikas of David Malka, Mashiach of Tehillim. How many millions here, K. Tehillim, K. Pitlach Tehillim, was said by Jews everywhere in the world this past year? How many millions of David Malach's words were said and are being said? Rim Nachman says, Kamesha Kosov, as it says in Torah, Miyakimin said, Becharbi Yuvakashti, with my sword and with my bow and arrow. And Rashi, the Targum says, Filu Bakosha. That when Yaakov said, with my sword and with my bow and arrow, of course he had physical weapons. We also have our soldiers, our Chayalim, and they're carrying physical weapons. What Yaakov was saying is that the Jewish people have every Jew, every one of Hashem's soldiers. Every soldier has Bacharbi Bakashti. And Yaakov said, Bacharbi Bakashti with my Tfilis and my Bakashas, my Davani. And therefore, the same David Melech, who in Shmuel Beis and Navi in Perikid Gimel is called Neim Zmiros Yisrael, Neim Zmirot Yisrael, the sweet singer of the Jewish people. Those words Neim Zmiros Yisrael are the Rishetavus Zayin Yodun, which is Zayin, which means a weapon. Play Zayin. That the sweet singer of Am Yisrael, David Melech. Under his robe carried a sword. And as the Gemara tells us that when it came time, David Melch would stop his learning and would take a break from his singing, from his songs, from his tehillim, and it would lead the Jewish people to war because that same tzaddik, the Imzmir Yisrael, was the greatest warrior of the Jewish people, and it's not a contradiction. The Chardi of Akashti. The same tzaddik who is destroying our enemies with the words of his lips would go out to war and lead Am Yisrael in our fight. And therefore, tell him, he is the third weapon of the Jewish people when we're at war. Every single word that you and I say, whether we understand what it means or we don't understand, every shilam alois, every single word of tilim, every single word of tefillah, is a powerful weapon. And we don't see with our eyes, we can't see. But if we close our eyes, Hashem is Baruch said, teach every one of us. These are, the, these are your soldiers that I'm assigning to you. And every word that you say, tell them you're saving this one. This name is Elon. This one's name is Moshe. This one's name is Eita. This one's name is Yitzchak. And this one is about to go into a booby trap building. And this one is about to walk on the street and I will show him Yimach Shimon who are standing on the roofs with rifles, with guns. And this is your Jew. And these are your Kepitlach Tehillim. And with your words, you're Miss Russia. Russia. You're a sniper. And you're going to knock off that guy on the roof. With your words of Tehillim.
That's why it says in the Zohar Kodesh, it says by Pinchas, it's Vayikach Romach Biyodo. Romach means a shield, the weapon, the spear, the shield. Romach is Reish Mem Ches. And the Zohar says the 248 that correspond to the 248 words of creation. Our words are weapons. Pastor Shalom, we don't use them properly, we use them to hurt each other. When we say words of Lashon Harachalila, we say things that are inappropriate, or we talk in Shul, Chas Shalom, then our words are weapons against ourselves, against each other. But when we use our words of davening and of Tehillim properly, Every single word, every single word is mamish a weapon. And Rav Sodek Akoyin says in Preet Sadek, hmm. The Dovna Malach is the Shliach Sibur. The Dovna Malach is the Chasn, is the Shliach Sibur. Of Am Yisrael. He leads us in davening and he leads us in war. He's the Shliach Tzibur. And our job is to follow David Hamalach. Our brothers and sisters are physically at war. And all Jews everywhere in the world are at war using the weapon of David Malkin Mashiach. And the fourth weapon, the fourth clean neshek. Neshek weapon of the Reshet Hevis, the letters, Neros Shabbos Kodesh. Neros Shabbat Kodesh. The candles of the Holy Shabbos. Shabbos. The light of Shabbos. The Menuch of Shabbos. So you have it right. When us Ashkenazim, we go into shul, we say to each other, good Shabbos. When we come home to our families, we say, good Shabbos. But yeah, it's not that, that's not what any of you say when you come home. I hope you don't. That's not what you say. Every single one of you, when you walk into the house, you come back from shul, what do you say? Ay, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. The greatest weapon that we have is Shabbat Shalom, Shabbos, the peace of Shabbos, the aura of Shabbos. Another city can explain that every Shabbos, the Menuch of Shabbos means that if you keep Shabbos properly, if your home is filled with the with the menuch and the oil of Shabbos. Then it brings you back, and we will have peace, my enemies. But the oil of Shabbos is the oil of Shabbat Shalom, is the oil of Shalom Bayez. It means that it's not enough just to keep Shabbos, to make Kiddush and Avdalah, and to keep the halachas of Shabbos. Shabbos is the time that we return to each other. Shabbos is the time we were able to feel that peace of our own families. And the Hakarat HaTov, the Hakarat HaTov, that he gave us each other. And that whatever goes on during the week when we're out in the world and our enemies surround us, we used to imagine, we used to think that here in America we weren't surrounded by our enemies. My father and mother never had such delusions. And I was raised in a home where it was clear to me the only ones who I could trust were each other. Only our own people, only I'm Yisrael. So the clay nation that we have of Neir Shabbos Kodesh. That whatever happens during the week, 
and surrounded by our enemies, whether whether in, in Lebanon or in Gaza, or whether on the streets of New York, London, Paris, or wherever else there are going to be more and more protests of our enemies, or in college campuses. Every one of us has the Neshek of Ne'er Shabbos Kaiva to return to ourselves, to return to our Ateknesiyot, our shuls, to return to the ones who we love. There's nothing, there's nothing in the world that is as powerful as that first smell when you walk into the house Friday night. Nothing is as powerful as Shabbat Shalom is good Shabbos. Shalom Aleichem Malachi, Shalom Malachi, oh yeah. In every good Shabbos, in every Shabbat Shalom, in every song of the Shabbos table, crushes our enemies, destroys our enemies. We don't see with our eyes, but we know. So we have to make peace with our children when you come home Shabbos in the whole time, the whole week also. The Shabbos, whatever it was. You know, the Chassidim have a custom. There are many foods that Chassidim eat. You also have special foods that you eat. And the Chassidim have special foods. One of the foods that they eat is fireful. I don't know how you call fireful in English. What is it? Couscous. You know what that is? So it's called, in Yiddish, it's called fireful. And the Baal Shem HaKadosh would say that you eat farfel on Shabbos to say that whatever happened during the week is farfel. It means forget about it. It's finished. So you had a little bit of an argument with your wife, with your husband. It's farfel. Your kid got you upset, didn't come home on time, was disrespectful. Baal Shabbos Baal Menuch. It's farfel. Kuloi Or. When Shabbos came into the world, it didn't say Vayer Vayiboka. Shabbos doesn't say Vayer Vayiboka. Everything is light. So these, these are our weapons. Ahavis Yisrael. Learning Torah, teaching Torah, especially the deeper secrets of Torah, Befrat, which we were taught by the Tzaddikim, by the Bali Azair. And the Mukubalim is the strongest weapon to reveal light of Mashiach or the secrets of Torah. But all Torah, to teach Torah, to learn Torah, every word of Torah. The third weapon, Tfilah, Davening, Tehillim. And the fourth weapon, the Kedusha of Shabbos, the Orv of that peace of Shabbos, of Shalom Bayez. That when there's peace in our homes, There'll be peace in Eretz Yisrael. There'll be peace for Jews everywhere in the world. And every single one of Hashem's Chayelim, every soldier, has to believe that he is a vital, needed soldier in Hashem's army, and that the war that we're fighting. Is Hashem's war. It's the war to save the entire world from the ugliness, the darkness, the riches of the last mutation of Amalek, which is Ishmael. And Rav Kook Zechitz had because the Vacher writes in the first volume of his letters, he gave us Shin Aleph. You get a Shin Aleph, if you have the letters of Rav Kook, look in the, in the Igu, Shin Aleph in the first Chayla. Listen to the words. It's clear, it's obvious. That even the lowest Jew, 
Im Yatsilo fun of Shiochulasa is Khesidim Kalhorilam Kula. If even the lowest person was given the opportunity that it was made known to him that he has the ability to save the world. Even the worst criminal, if he was given the opportunity, if he knew that he had, he alone had this chance to save the world, to rescue Mamish, to rescue the world. Of Cook writes, He would be awakened and strengthened with Simcha and with Gvura, with strength. Last time to do that. For and all laziness and all negligence, ain't no bar ki im mechayse muna be god la tosh oise mamish im kol ayikum be esakater hamitzus havoda v'zdaki chosamidus. And the only reason that you and I are not coming that say to shul on time or talking during davening, or not learning what we should be learning, or not careful with our words, is because, what Cook says, we don't realize. We don't believe, that every single word of davening, every single word of Torah, every effort that you and I make to be better, to be kinder, not to get angry, not to look at those things on the computer, not to lift our eyes, our eyes and look at something we shouldn't look at. Every tiny effort that a Jew makes to be good, to do tshuva. It's toivy, it's toivy, it's toivy, it's toivy, it's toivy, it's you're doing the toivy, you're doing the biggest chesed for all of creation. It's toivy, it's when you work, try to be a little bit less angry this week, that when you feel like saying something you shouldn't say, you hold back. You make that effort. Only Hashem knows that you're trying. But you make an effort to, to do the right thing, to, to learn an extra Mishnah, an extra Gemara. To come a minute earlier to that. To give a smile to a Jew who looks like he's broken and could use a kind word and a smile. When you spend an extra minute, because it means so much to your grandmother to talk to her a little bit, and you spend an extra minute with your with your grandmother, your grandfather. An extra minute to give them life because they're waiting every minute to hear from you and to see you. I never had grandparents. What a schus to be able to have a grandparent. Ashav, what is that? Rav Kook writes, Hey, Hashem is a name. Bedive Kedosh Elyon Bali Kabbalah's Emes. Hashem has illuminated our eyes with the teachings of the great Kedosh Elyon, the Holy Ones, Bali Kabbalah, the Emet, the Mukubalim, the Mukubalim. Rabbi Shemin, the Ariya Kaddish. Who wrote a great deal and taught us as godly Yikras Avoida the value of our weapons, the power of our weapons of Torah and Tvila, and me this Torahist, how strong a Jew is, the kaiches that a Jew has. How a Jew has every single one of us. Remember, he said, I feel how Yorul Shabbat even the lowest Jew, takes out a tilim, opens up a sefer, puts his arm around their friend to give him chizik. How Yorul Shabbat Noshim. Echmalim Ayodeh is Klolus Havai Bechol Kretez, lifting up Klolus Havai means Kaluta Havaya, means all of creation. Uh, has come and become how much more so your own family and your own friends and your own community. So could you imagine?
if it would be made known to you or to me. That there's a Jew, and you would be told, or I would be told the name of that Jew, who's sitting someplace, God forbid, in a tunnel somewhere. That we can't be mastering what it means. Who knows who's even left of those chevra. We can't be mastering what it means for those people who are sitting, Yoshwe Choshev Chitzamavas, who are sitting there like that for a year. And if you or I would know, and another would come and say, the name of that person, I would say that you should know that your neshama is tied up with the neshama of that Jew who's sitting someplace in that tunnel. And that that person's life, whether he's going to breathe the next minute, whether he's going to continue to have hope that the day will come that he's going to get out, depends on you. How much the person you or I would be misheard, the simcha b'gvuru. How you and I would discover within ourselves a certain koch ne'elam, an energy, a strength that we didn't know that we had. And we would do anything. Now we can understand what the Rambam is saying on a very, very real and raw level. That when you and I do a little bit of tshuva, we try better. We try harder. Not just as says made tshuva. That every tiny effort that we make, we're picking up the clay neshek that Hashem as well gave to us. And the Ramam says, the Khviyas Asmas Kololum Kulul Kavskus, the Garam Lova Hem Shua Vahatsala. And you brought it upon yourself, and for those whose Nishamas depend on you, Shua Vahatsala. Salvation, Hatsala. Rescue. Because each and every Nishmas Yisrael, every single soul of a Jew, is bound to the neshamas of all the Jewish people. And there isn't one of us, as Rav Cook writes in the fourth paragraph of Arsat Shuvah, there isn't a soul of a Jew that's by itself. Even if chas v'chalila, in this world you don't have, you're someplace and you're by yourself, there is no such thing as a Jew that's by himself. Our neshamas are tied together in a great chain. In a rope of many strings, as the Tanya says, Yaakov Hevel Nachalasa, a Hevel, a rope that binds all Jews together. And instead of wasting time watching what the anti Semites have to say on CNN and CBS, and what the Rishayim have to say on ABC and BBC, and wondering what is it to those who hate us. What chidushim did they come up with today in the United Nations? If instead you would open up another Mishnah, you would say another capital Tehillim, you'd go 20 minutes over to the Oha. And you would take our weapons that Hashem gave us. You'd be mocking the shavit piv. Those anti Semites will be silenced forever. This past year, there's been so much more serious nefers of Jews risking their lives to save other Jews. of Jews learning more terror than they usually do, of davening more than usual. It's 
So why is it that it's still so hard for us? All of us are maminim b'nei maminim, and we believe in the words of the Rambam, the Gemara. The Rambam is only telling us the Gemara and Kedushin. And we believe in all that we're learning, that we have these kaychas, we have such karach gvura. We have such neshek, such neshikot, such kisses, such weapons. So why is it still so hard? And why is it that we still waste so much time when we're at war, man? So there are two problems. Aleph. From the time that we were in the world, we go to school, from the very beginning of our lives, we're used to two types of hashpa. We're used to two ways of influencing and impacting other people, of making changes. The first is by speaking to people. In other words, I believe in something. I know something. And I try to use my kohadibra, I try to use the gift of my words to influence this other person, to change this person. And now, especially with people, you can have you can have people that they don't know to separate between an aleph and a base, and you can already be giving Torah classes. He has already a podcast. You understand? And he's an influencer with you know forty thousand followers. The koch of Dibur, of Hashpa is something we understand from the time we were in the world. That if I want to change your mind. I could try to talk to you, to reason with you. If I'm a speaker, I could reach other people. And nowadays you can reach a million people. Scary? You give a shear. You can send out the uh, clips. But the type of hashpah means that you are a shpeer from the top. You are a shpeer by speaking to people. You want a hashpah, you can... You can, you can give money, you can give tzedakah to a certain uh, institution, a yeshiva, whatever it is, a hospital, to help people to do things. You can be mashpi in a direct way. That's one type of ashpa. The second type of ashpa is indirect ashpa. Indirect means what? You could be a role model for somebody even though you don't realize it. Somebody will tell you, you know, 25 years later, I want you to know that you had a tremendous influence on my life. And you say, I don't even know who are you. What, what, did, I, what did I do? You don't realize I had tremendous chizik from you. I watched how you went through that difficulty that you had in your life. You didn't know. You, know, you, don't, you never met me. I never met you. But I want you to know you changed my life. So there are ways to influence direct and indirect. You have a person who writes a book. You can influence all kinds of people through the book. An article. Without directly coming into contact with somebody, there are ways to, to change people. But what we're learning about today, based on this Rambam, and what Rav Cook is explaining, and you and I all believe in this, that there's another type of Ashpah, the problem is we are so used to believing only in those two types of ashpa, direct and indirect. But the most powerful form of, of influence is not the first two that I just spoke about. It's a third type of ashpa, the one we're learning about today, which we could call ashpa schoolist. Schoolist. Ashpa schoolist means the belief that even if I'm sitting someplace by myself in a basement and nobody in the world knows it, or I'm sitting with a towel set over my head. Someplace in the corner in shul, and I'm saying these words. You know, last week, you remember, last day of Shabbos, when, when we were able to remove that filth of that Russia. I don't want to say his name in a holy place. When, he was, when they found him and they killed him, you know how they got to him? They used a special kind of a bomb. You know what it's called? A bunker buster. 
means that there's a karach that this bomb has. It's an unbelievable thing. It has this bomb has such a karach to go and dig deep and to find the, the cockroach where he's hiding. We're learning that there's such a thing, and we believe there's such a car, but uh, you say a word of telling it's a mamish, a, a bunker buster. A word of learning, a word of davening. A nishika, a kiss, of a harvest as well. Of Shabbos. It's a hashpah that you don't see with your eyes. When Mashiach comes, those Jews whose lives you and I saved with our words, with our nishika, with our kisses, they're going to be told by Mashiach that you should know, I want you to meet this person, come here, and they're going to do to you saved my life. I saved your life. Yeah, you don't know. Because during that year of Tavshin Peidad, when the war was going on, and it was Chav Bey's Nisan, and you were crying when you lit the candles because you were worried about, about, about the soldiers. You should know that I was one of those soldiers, that I was just going to a place where they were going to kill me, and you saved my life, and I want to thank you for saving my life. There's a koch, there's an unbelievable koch, a hashpah, that's called hashpah school, is that you, you can't see with your eyes. But it's the most powerful hashpah. Since all our neshamas are bound one to the other, when one neshama lifts itself up, when one of us tries a little bit better, when one of us, when one of us tries to be a better father, a better mother, a better Jew, a better child, when one of us tries a little bit harder to be more pure, that that shakes up the entire chain. Because we're woven together in one great tapestry, all of Am Yisrael. As Rav Kuk writes, in the Rosh HaNesham Shekol Yochid, Humukushim HaNesham HaKvalus, Shekol HaVai Kula, that the soul of every individual Jew is tied up to the soul of all creation, to all worlds and all souls. So the first, the first problem that we have is we, not, we don't believe in that strongly enough. We think the only way that I can be my spear, the only way that I can change things, is if I'm the guy that gave $10 million to this cause, which is great. But that's the only way that I can make a difference. Or the only way that I can make a difference is if I give some speech or if I convince somebody like this, or I have a fight with some, with some anti-Semite and argue and prove my point, that's the only way that I could close the mouth of the Russia. It's not true. I can close the mouth of the Russia by opening my mouth in my corner of Hashem's world with my tilim, with my learning, with my kindness, with a good word, with a call to my grandmother or grandfather. So the first problem is we don't believe in that strongly enough. And we have to be mechazik ourselves. Chazak v'nes chazik bad ameinu, bad areyelokeinu. To use those weapons and to believe in the power of the weapons that we have. And the influence, the hashpah of the weapons that we have. Our weapons can go all the way to Tehran. You heard of such a place? Some of you are too young to remember. The old ones here remember Tehran when there were better days in those years. And the weapons of Am Yisrael are going to reach Tehran soon. The physical weapons are going to reach Tehran. But the way that our physical weapons of our soldiers are going to reach Tehran, reach Tehran at that moment is because of our weapons that are pushing those missiles, those bunker buses that are going to find even the Khomeini and Mach Shemai in his basement. That's going to happen soon. But those bombs are going to be sent by our words, by our Shabbos, by our Tehillim, by our Mishnah, by our Gemara. And our Klei Neshek. And therefore, the Nebi says, I'll be finished soon. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't come with you, so I'm a little bit more. And therefore the Nabi says, the Nabi Yimyo says in Perikid Gimel, you should know that Hashem is crying. 
And this is the second problem that we have. Hashem is crying. It says in Pasuk, we must start in Tifka Nafshi. Hashem has, has a, a hiding place. It says, we must start in Tifka Nafshi. Hashem is crying in this hiding place. Why? So it says in Pasuk, Ribnei Geva. And they gave her the simple meaning of the Pasuk is because of us being arrogant. Geva is a lotion of Gaiva, Gava, conceit. Hashem is crying because we're arrogant. But the Gemara in Chagiga says, it's much deeper than that. It's that we're not proud enough of who we are. Bebnei Geva means, Bebnei Gava son she Yisrael. Bebnei Gava tan she Yisrael. She nit le mehem, be nit la lumas ha'ilam. This is the first terror in Lukutei Maran. Gava son she Yisrael means that we don't have the confidence to believe how much Hashem loves us. We don't believe that He has given even people like ourselves the koach to use these weapons. We believe that tzaddikim can do this. Tzaddikim may be a tzaddik's davening, a tzaddik's, a tzaddik's learning. So here you believe that we have weapons. You believe that Tehillim is powerful. You believe that learning is powerful. You believe that Shabbos is powerful. You believe that Shabbos is powerful, but not yours. Because why? Because I did this avera yesterday, I did this avera last week, I did this avera, I do these averas, but I'm not such a person. So Hashem doesn't give me the, the ability to use these weapons because I've been rendered weaponless, because I'm worthless. So Hashem is crying, but Mr. Antif Kanashi, but Negavoshi is swell, but we're not proud of who we are. Like when Fuk says, even I feel like Yorish and Hashem, of course we have to be better. But even the lowest Jew in the world is infinitely higher than the highest one of theirs. And therefore, on Yotav, we ask Hashem, don't take us into judgment. Don't come with us into judgment. And the Tzadikim taught, means, don't just take us with you into judgment. Do me a favor, when you take me into judgment, bring another, bring from the Yomus Island, bring a guy also into judgment, together with me. And then make a choice who's better. But they got us and she is so. We're not proud of who we are. We don't believe that we have this, which is called in, in Tanakh, Gaon Yaakov, Gaon Yaakov, the confidence, the pride of being a Jew. That it's hard even to say the words, that Hashem, the Shechina in this world, of course, Hashem in his essence. We don't understand, but Hashem made it in this world to know us little Kim that we give him strength, Kim Yachal. That if we're not proud of who we are and we don't know that we have these weapons, that Hashem Kim Yachal is crying without strength in a corner someplace to know us little Kim. Hashem says, Give me strength. And we look and say, Me? I should give you strength? Hashem says, Yes. You're Davin, you're Tilm, you're Midas, you're Tshuva, to know us little Kim. But that very same Navi Yumiyahu, who revealed to us these, these words that Hashem is crying because we, because we made ourselves like into nobodies, into lemmachs, uh, into, no, into nothings. That same Navi, at the very beginning, did not want to be a Navi. You know that? Yumiyahu Navi did not want the job. Just like Moshe didn't want the job, Yumiyahu Navi did not want the job. And Hashem says to the Navi Yemiyol, Hashem is appointing him, Hashem says, Before you were even formed in your mother's womb, I already prepared you for this job. Before I even formed you in your mother's womb. You're the, you're the man. You have to go. You're the Navi. What does Yemiyol say? Aha, Hashem Elokim. Hashem, I don't even know how to talk. I'm not an influencer, yeah? I don't even have a podcast. What Jew doesn't have a podcast? I don't even have a podcast. I'm not an influencer. I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to write articles. I don't know how to do interviews. 
I'm not rich. I can't, I can't uh, build a yeshiva. I can't build a shul. So Navi, the Navi says, Now it's, I'm a child. I'm a young person. Now, and now it means not only an age, it means, uh, I'm a nobody. When you want to say somebody's a fool in Yiddish, you say he's a nar. A nar. A nar means a chana garnish. I'm nothing. Kinar anochi. So no, Yom Yom, we can't be, we can't comprehend Yom Yom Nobi's greatness. A novi. So Hashem says to him, go out and, and, and help my people and, and say to Am Yisrael. And the novi says, I don't, know, I don't know how to talk. Because the, way to, the only way to save people is by talking. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to change them. I can't change them. I can't influence them. I'm a nar, I'm a nobody, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a kid, I'm nothing. So what does Hashem, Hashem starts yelling at him. And Hashem says, I'll turn a nar and And Hashem saying that to me and you also. If you think that, if you think that when you're, when you're on the computer and you, and you go to that place, has something that you shouldn't look at. And you think, what difference does it make in the world? What difference does it make to some soldier, or to a hostage? What difference does it make to all of creation? What difference does it make to my kids and my grandchildren or the great-grandchildren that I don't even know yet? What difference does it make if I look at that disgusting thing on the computer? I'm a nobody. What difference do I make? So Hashem says to you and to me, I'll tell you now and don't say that, Kinar and Oichi. And then Hashem says, I'm going to tell you who you are. Remember, I feel how Yorish Shemanashim, even the simplest and lowest Jew. Hashem says, I'm going to tell you right now who you are. This is who you are. Listen to this. I've appointed you in control of all the Goyim, of all the world. And of all nations. Lintois, the lintois, the harris, the lintois, to uproot, to overthrow, to destroy, and to plant. And you can see, like a person saying, You're talking to me? And Hashem says, I'm talking to you. I could do what? Again, Hashem says, Lintois, lintois, the harris, to overthrow, to destroy, to crush. Villain Torah and to plant good and to plant worlds. Because every single Jew has an Asak, has a business with all of creation, with the biggest influences, infinite influences of all of creation. And therefore, Hashem is Baruch, who is the real commander in chief, is telling each and every one of us, Chazak, 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 Vinit Chazak, Bada, Meni, Bada, Reilo, Kainu. And he's saying to us, I'll tell him now, and now he don't say that you're not strong. And in that eighth chapter of Tilim and Capital Ches, where it says, the man says, which means that even a little child has the ability through his davening and learning to silence the enemies and to take revenge against the enemies of the Jewish people. So it says, that the Chasrei Ma'at Melukim. But the Jews, but the Chasrei Ma'at Melukim is a little bit less than God. It doesn't mean in his Achilah, but we're, we're the closest to Hashem. Hashem has put the Jewish people in control of all of creation. Everything that exists is at the feet of the Jewish people. And that's why the way that that, that Tehillim starts is with the words, Lam nat seach ala gittis mizmelo We finish in two minutes. Lam nat seach ala gittis mizmelo David. What does it mean, Lam nat seach ala gittit? What does it mean, gittis? So there are all explanations. Usually the English just writes it in English, gittis. Okay, is it some people, some place? Chazal tell us it's the lotion of gas, like the wine press. You know, they used to, how they made grapes and, and uh, how they made wine and olive oil. They would, they would step on, they would crush. And Chazal tells us that Don Melch was saying into the future, on the Halagitis, Mizmul David. The Don Melch was saying, Chavir, say my song, say my Tehillim. The Hashem promises us 
that the time is going to come where you're going to crush the enemies of the Jewish people like grapes and like olives under your feet. And our problem is, we, can, we say, I don't know how to do, I can't, not me, I can't do anything. I can't change things. I can't help. Every one of us is now obligated, always, but especially when there's a war, to enlist and to be in the war, and to fight in the war, and to be strong, and to be brave and courageous in the war. There's much more to say, but I'll end up just tell you a little story. The news of what happened during the Holocaust, the entire horrible picture of what happened didn't reach Yushalayim until the very end of the war. Remember that in those days, the communication was not anywhere what it is now. Now, even though in Eretz they had heard that there were terrible shchitas, shchitot that were taking place, and they heard that many Jews were killed by the Germans, Yamach Shema, but they didn't know in Eretz to what extent. They didn't know about the gas chambers, the crematory, they didn't know. What had happened, they were terrified because they knew they all had, they had relatives in Europe, but they didn't know to what extent. They didn't know whether the, the brother, the sister was alive, the kid, the parent, the grandparent. They didn't know. But slowly towards the end of the war, the horrible truth and some pictures began to make their way into Yerushalayim. And the entire holy city of Yushalayim and the cities of Eretz Yisrael were in a state of shock and availus and mourning. Screaming and crying on the streets like in Shushan Habir. And there was a Rosh Hashiva at that time, the Rosh Hashiva of the Chavon Yeshiva of Cheskel Sarna. It was Rosh Hashanah, right before blowing the shofar. And you know that we say certain psukim, we say certain psukim by tkir shofar, by shofar blowing. And it came time for Rav Chazko, for the Rosh Hashiva, to say the psukim and to blow the shofar. And he was standing up there, and everybody was waiting in silence. And the high school all of a sudden said the following. I mean, I'm sure he said it to those guys in the yeshiva in Yiddish back then, but the way it's written in the Sefer in Hebrew is the following. He was talking to everybody in the, in the base Medrash. What do you think? Those Jews, our relatives, our families, those Jews, our brothers and sisters, they're buried hiding in bunkers underneath Warsaw and Lodge and all the other places. What do you think they were whispering to each other? When they heard on top of them in the house, when they heard on top of them the cleared boots of the Nazis looking for Jews. What did the Jews down there in the bunker, what were they whispering to each other at that moment? So of course, he wasn't asking the shot of what they were whispering. Of course, they're whispering to each other, Shah, Shah, Shah. 
Don't cry. Don't make a sound. Don't make a sound. They're going to hear us. They're going to hear us. But inside the Nishamas, it was something else altogether. He says the following. My big shuburega zumamish. What were they asking for that last moment? What were they asking for? Atemiyo di mabikshu, do you know what they were asking for? And then he said the Pasuk, and we say by blowing the shelf the Pasuk, for the same chapter until, Yad be'er amim tachteinu, v'lo'umim tachas ragleinu. Nations, our enemies are going to be crushed, and kingdoms under our feet. And then the Rosh Hashanah said, tachas ragleinu, and he repeated, screaming and crying, Tachas Ragleinu, Tachas Ragleinu, Tachas Ragleinu. That's what they asked for that last moment in the bunker. They didn't know they were going to survive, but they believed in the Nitzchis of Am Yisrael. That Am Yisrael is not a Nitzchis, Am Yisrael is forever Nesach, it's Allah Yishakeh. And then even if they were not going to get out of that bunker, they believed that Am Yisrael was going to win. And therefore, that last moment was with that belief deep inside of their hearts, even if they couldn't say anything with their lips, but in their hearts they knew. In the end, Yad Ba'amim Tachtein, Ulumim Tachas Raglenu, Tachas Raglenu, Tachas Raglenu. That's what we're going to see, Chavim. Tachas Raglenu, under our feet. And the outcome will be soon, but it depends on our being courageous soldiers that take up the weapons of the Jewish people and fight the final war before Mashiach comes. And then we're going to be zeichah for that day, each and every one of us. We're going to be zeichah to see David Amal himself smiling. And David Amal and Mashiach are saying, I'm so proud of my warriors. And they're going to be these like old bubbies. They're going to say, I'm a warrior of yours. And, the, and, and David Amal is going to say, Mashiach is going to say, what do you mean? You're my strongest warrior, Bobby. You're there, the, you're there saying, tell him, nobody said tell him like you. You're the best tell him, Zog. You're the best tell him. Nobody said tell him like you, Grandma. And that grandmother's going to smile from me, say her, it's like say her, from one end of the universe to the other end of the universe, knowing that she was a soldier that brought Mashiach to Kainu. And all of us are such soldiers. Let's be brave. Let's be courageous. Stop paying attention to what the anti Semites say. Don't waste your time with that stupidity, with those lies. Learn, daven, do mitzvahs, smile, be good to other Jews, be besimcha, make strong hakafis. Don't make hakafis of crying and mourning. Make hakafis, when we went around Yericho, how did we come to Eretz Yisrael? Yericho was, was, was the lock, because I'll say of Eretz Yisrael, that our enemies were holding us away from coming home. How did we break through the walls? We blew the shelter. And we made our coffers. We already blew the sofa yesterday. The time is coming, we're going to make our coffers. And the word sofa has the letters schok pinu or shonenu rina. Of the letters sofa. Schok pinu of the Jacob says that. Schok pinu or shonenu rina means, and on that day when Mashiach comes, oz yimole schok pinu. Then the laughter of our enemies, it's already being silenced. They're not smiling so big anymore in Tehran. You know that. Every time there's a bird that flies over, they're ducking. It's good. Oh, it's Yamala, it's Chag Pino, Arena. Then our mouths are going to be filled with, this, with the laughter. Our children, our parents, our grandparents, the Bizarchita, our kids around the Sheikh Neofa, those who are no longer in the world are going to come back to life. Together with us coming back to life. And we're going to say to Mashiach Sekenu, Yechi Adonenim or Reinu Rabbeinu, Mashiach Sekenu, Lolam Vahed, Dugla Shemar, Amitis, Bemhevi, Amen, Amen, Amen.